Kilong. Vielen Dank. Guten Morgen, ich, guten Morgen auch, ich heiße Karen und ich bin hier mit euch zu reden über das kulturelle Kompetenz. Äh, sorry. Ich bin ein nasa Pilipinas Palako. Pasensya na. Cultural competence. So, before I start this talk, I have a few questions for you. But before that, lahat po ba kayo? St. Luke's ba? College of Nursing. Lahat na to ng batch? Sir? No? Okay. So, this question, please raise your hands if you think that you already have at least one patient that, you know, in hospital, in OGT, from a different culture or has a different ethnicity, religion, beliefs, gender, or socioeconomic lifestyle from your own. Have you cheated at least one patient? Raise your hand. Okay. Now, for those who haven't raised their hands, I have a follow-up question. Please raise your hand if you think that you will, in the future, be treating at least one patient or dealing with one patient who has a different ethnicity, gender, belief, religion, and so on. Raise your hand if you think that. Yon. So, so yung iba hindi po mag-nurse. <laughs> so, you know, as you all see, marami pong nag-raise their hands. In the future, all of us, all of you, will at least treat one patient who's part of a different, I mean, cultural diverse population, one way or another. It's just a matter of time. It's just that, like, for me, uh, I started early because the grade lang na una. So, mas na lang na experience. Would you agree with me if I say that different cultures actually need specific cultural care? Yeah? Because, uh, um, it's actually our challenge as professionals because we know that there is already an increasing need of healthcare for people from different walks of life, different races, actually, diba? And it's our professional challenge as nurses to be able to do a good intervention on that. But you know, I have a good news for you because, sorry, no, uh, for the, I have a good news for you because, you know, all challenges can be overcome. Financial, money, and love life challenges can be overcome. And what's even good about that is that if you're culturally competent as a nurse, it's considered as a skill. And as we all know, skills can be actually learned and mastered. Is that right? Diba? Actually, with, with this one, um, I'm here to actually share with you uh, my insights since I worked in abroad and I would like to share you with you my experiences. You know, working abroad, communication is very important. Even our choice of words matter because it could actually impact our patients differently. But before I start my talk here, I would like to introduce myself. So I'm Maria Karen Viola, but I'm I'm known uh, as Carsi ever since. So I'm a graduate of Trinity University of Asia, St. Paul's College of Nursing. I'm very proud of that. I'm part of Batch in Sydney, Batch 2009. So hindi po ako ang edad ko. Na 32 na po ako at may anak na akong nine years old. Yes. And I'm very honored, uh, and it's my pleasure to be here. Actually, kung hindi ako nilbita ni Mang Pakata dito, ako mag-volunteer kay Mang Pakata. So, I'm very honored because after 10 years, ngayon lang po ulit ako nakatapak sa Mandel Hall. And ngayon ko lang ulit nakanta yung genetic hindi. Nakakadawa lang. So, in terms of my experience as a nurse, um, I have a total of around 9 years in public, private, and I even worked like a private tutor nurse. Kasi, just to tell you a short story, um, during our days, nursing is like very big. And after we graduated, wala na po kaming naabot ng trabaho. So, private duty nursing is parang extra work namin yun. But we don't have like contracts for that one. And like after like one year, nag work pa call center before I uh, was employed in a public hospital. And I worked in new, uh, 
emergency department, and also medicine. Now, currently, I'm working in Germany. Thank you, Lord. Okay? And I'm sure graduates so from, from Severe Vita could actually work in Germany too, after like a year or two. And I'm working in the neurosurgery department and currently working for two years already. Now, I'm also uh, one of the state representatives from the Association of Filipino Nurses in Germany. So, masarap na share ko to sa inyo kasi siguro in 10 years time, if you, kung nasaan man kayo in 10 years time, you will be proud also to share this. Now, let's move on. I'm just gonna share with you pixelated siya, but the, they are my work workmates in Germany. So, very, ako lang nag isang Pilipino sa amin sa area ko. So yeah. So okay, let me start my talk right now. But before that, since we're going to be talking about cultural competence, we have to learn what culture is. How do you understand culture? Culture is actually evolving because if we're going to be comparing culture from before and now, it's actually different. But according to Google, values it is a pattern of learned and shared behavior and beliefs of a particular social ethnic of or age group, which is actually true. If we're going to be comparing our culture from Japan, from Germany, it's really different. And it's not just, you know, how we do things, but the values, what we believe, our language is part of the culture, communication, and the practices that we share in common. So just to put it in a very simple way, it's a way of life. Culture is the way of life. Now, if we're going to be putting it in the question, how many languages do you actually need to communicate with the rest of the world? What do you think? How many words? How many languages? Yes, correct. Just one. All right. So just one. Actually, it is our own. Okay. Why? Because we may be working in a different country and uh, not speaking their words, but through our actions, our upbringing, and how we apply it to the people. Please, next. So, now cultural competence. What is cultural competence? It is the ability to understand and communicate and effective, effectively and interact with people across cultures. It's also being you know, aware of the differences of other people from, our, from us. And of course, you know, being aware of the no or, or having the knowledge of other cultures from other countries, or not even in other countries, or even iba yung culture ng Makati sa Marikine, meron ganon. So next, now we go to healthcare. How will we be connecting that with healthcare? Bakit? Because as nurses, we possess a global mindset. Our patients could be, you know, it's not just about the face. Okay, see. Si Si Sir mukhang Amerikana, pero hindi naman pala siya Amerikana. So we have to, to be aware culturally, being a nurses, because we will be dealing with different kinds of people. And for those who will be working abroad in the future, mas lalo. Diba? Alright, just a sample. Meet Nurse Tina. She's actually a Chinese-Filipino nurse, and she's been working in the States for just four months. Now, biglang, their patients has been complaining that she's not looking sa bata nila while they're talking. Why do you think so? It's actually because, you know, some some Chinese, they're, um, they have this culture that they don't actually look direct to the eye if they're like talking to people. But, but actually, as a nurse, we should be aware, okay, I'm in the States now, and I should be looking direct at their eye. Despite my own, you know, my own belief, I should adjust. Lalo na they're working in the States. So that's what's wrong there. So Tina is not being culturally competent. That's why she had complaints. Okay. So learn, we learn this cultural, having this cultural competence. Pero tayong tinatawag na ask triad. It's not like a pyramid, okay? Um, these three must be simultaneously honed and practiced. Hindi ko lang alam kung paano i ano sa, sa presentations. But they're all equal, okay? But we have to talk about attitude first. So what is attitude? It's not just, you know, 
um, how we how we interact with people, but it's characterized by three important things: empathy, tolerance, and openness. What sample for empathy? You know, empathy. Um, first year pa lang natuwa na tayo ng compassion. It's very important. And one example for empathy, it allows us to be not just in imaginative way, ah, but in a realistic perspective, to be in the shoe in the shoe of our patients. Just one example. Example, you have a patient who is a refugee. She's a single mom and has two kids. Now, if you think that the patient is very shy, she's not, she's always undecisive, we should be aware of that. It's just like may ilan pa tayo na parang, okay, but hindi siya nag-decide ang tagal, laging takot, kinakausap ko lang naman. We have to be aware. We have to be in the shoe of the patient. Okay, refugee ako. Ang dami, I'm traumatized. That's why I need to to be aware of what I'm going to be saying to the patient and how I'm going to be reacting to the patient. Okay? Second is openness. Ito, sa Germany, magugulat na lang kayo na una, siguro one week ko doon, yung isang nurse na German, she brought beer to the patient sa bed niya. And I was like, why? Because we don't practice that here, right? Yeah, the, the, and ask the patient, "Hello, sir, why are you uh, why are you drinking this one?" And I was like, not yet culturally competent. I, my question is, why are you drinking this? Because I want it, and it's allowed. Sa kanila, if the patient is, you know, um, alcoholic, and they say they're alcoholic and they want beer, they will receive. We actually have beers in our refrigerator in our nursing station if the patient needs beer. Onti na lang yung nurses na uminom. And what more is that patients are allowed to smoke? Di ba dito sa Pilipinas, okay, confined ka, you're not allowed to smoke. But sa kanila, two days post-op, may mga drainage pa sa ulo, may mga bandage pa, hindi pa makalakad. They're in wheelchairs. We even bring them down to smoke. Na mga subero na diosis sila doon. So it's not because that's bad. It's part of their culture, and you have to be open-minded about this. And you have to be. At first, I was really surprised, but then, okay, it's their way of life. I have to adjust since I'm working in Germany. So that is openness. Now, self-tolerance. Self-tolerance is you have to ask yourself: Am I overreacting? Is this enough? Is this not enough? Like for example, we have a slightly deaf person, patient. He said, I have um I know English na her get it. Um uh, hearing sorry, aid. I have English. Hearing aid. Hearing aid, thank you, sir. Um hearing aid and the patient was like, um, I'm slightly deaf, okay. And then this nurse, my friend, was like, Hello, my name and she was already shouting at the patient. She didn't realize that he was just like slightly deaf and she ended up like shouting in the whole station. So you have to evaluate yourself. Am I doing? Am I overreacting? So being culturally competent is part of that. It's not like target, okay, deaf, slightly deaf, kilaham mo ng OA. It's not like that, okay? Now skills. For the next of Ask Tribe is skills. S is, okay, one person, especially for nurses, should have a good set of skills. That is, yeah, multitasking, problem solving, decision making, crisis management, being resourceful. Yan bidang bidang Pilipino sa Germany. Being resourceful. Gulat sila. Wala kami mask. Kinawa ko talaga yung cardboard natin kahit sa matanda. Carsi said, good. You must have been very good, Carsi. We have to do skillan. How did you learn that? It was like Philippines, and she was like, they were like. Oh, Filipino, kasi hindi si Kat masada ang Filipino. So, please, if you're gonna be working in Germany, let's apply Filipino. Anyway, back to the topic. So, sa lahat ng skills that we have, communication is number one in terms of being culturally competent. Ah, you did you know that when when the language comes from a a, a person of authority, it's very powerful, especially in hospitals when we wear our uniforms doctors wear their coats if you put yourself in the shoe of the patient and you will see a doctor it's like okay super high respect because we already know that they're knowledgeable in what they're doing they're like the the foundations of the hospital whatever they say it's like super you won't believe okay 
So, as nurses wearing uniform, we have to, you know, panindikan natin yun. And whatever we see, it's very power powerful. That's why being culturally competent, communication is very important. Okay? Now, I've, I've learned this um, pie from Dr. Albert Marabia. If we're gonna be noticing, oh, 7% is just spoken words and the rest is body language, right? It's not just, communication is not just expressed verbally, actually. It's more of the gestures, how you say it, how you say it with your face. It could be like in Germany, so on I, I, I didn't know how to speak well German, but I tried. But I use my face. Like, I alam ko lang is, how are you? The kids, dear, and then I smile. And you will know, you have to know the difference, huh? because one example with that is there is a Chinese, sorry, poor Chinese, Chinese doctor and a German um, nurse. Now, the, 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 the German doctor, because Germans are very straightforward, it's like, um, kung itatagalo ko siya or English ko siya, bigay mo, take risk, kasi papilmahan mo yung pasyente. Ganun lang. Kasi in Chinese, is it yung Chinese parang mga Pilipino na medyo, medyo mahiyain? Hindi, kailangan natin parang, paano po pilmahin lang? We have to be, to be precise, we have to know the other details because with Germans, they just sometimes give you paper, sign. Oh, the shift, gaganon. Pa, di ba yung accent nila nakakatakot? Akala mo parang asumit naman ito. Oh, the shift. Ganyan. But in reality, it's just how they speak. So knowing how they how they talk, knowing how they actually um, express their, being aware of how they express their words and action through faces is also being culturally competent. Full SD. Okay, the next one is acknowledge. It's very important because um, this um, cultural competence is vastly rooted in our knowledge, okay? And being aware of different practices from different countries, or hindi mo naman kailangan malaman lahat actually. You just have to know. For example, I'll be working in a public hospital. And you know the people in the public hospital are Hindi ka naman pwede mag-ilagte doon na parang, Hey, what's the problem? Eh, yung patient mo parang, di ba, walang pera, nagbebenta lang ng sigarilyo dyan sa tabi. Tapos sasabihin mo, what's the problem? Di ba, hindi ganun. Pag nandun ka naman po sa, kasi ibang sa government, pag nagtrabaho din kayo, dapat sasabayan nyo rin yung mga pan, ano, gusto po, mga ganyan kayo. And then, for example, if you work in um, a private hospital, and then nasanay ka sa government, Ano po problema natin? Ganun ka pa maglakad, diba? It's, you have to be aware of your surrounding, how you're gonna be applying it. So parang ang galing natin, diba? Ang bilis natin mag-adjust. Lalo na pag nasa Germany ka pa. What's the problem? Hindi naman sila ganun. Napaka, napaka formal nila doon. And like for example, in Japanese, sa Japan, kung may mga Japan dito, kailangan super galang nyo. Hayo. What's the problem? Ganon. Kailangan adjust tayo dyan. And, itong mga samples, but, um, you're just, you know, um, kunyari health benefits. Um, in some cultures, people believe that talking about a possible poor health outcome will cause the outcome to occur. So, we must be aware. I'm not sure what, what country is this or race, but if you say that, okay, you have, um, you have, melanoma, pwede ka na po mamatay so you don't have to sige isipin na mamamatay na talaga or you have to be careful doon tulad sa Pilipinas sometimes the decisions and plans we have to explain to the family members it's just that compared to Germany sobrang independent nila doon they don't need their family's approval kahit 90 years old they don't need their you know their sons or daughters but in the Philippines pwede ko po bang hintayin yung mama ko sasabihin ko lang so simple yung ganun lang is being aware of that is already being culturally competent so ethnic custom different roles of women and men society may determine who makes decision about accepting so asawa same as health customs so religious beliefs like Jehovah's Witness and I'm sure you are aware of that meron sa amin Jehovah's Witness ayaw magpa blood, blood transfusion but Good thing we have here like um, synthetic blood. 
na pwedeng gamitin um, as, as alternative or yung mga tablets dyan. Um, dietary customs like halal consuming patients, um, mga Muslims na babawal ang meat, they only consume non-meats, right? And interpersonal custom like yun nga, yung kwento ko, eye contact. Alright? So, we have to be aware of this because the way you treat a halal consuming only patient is actually different from how you treat someone who consume any food. Diba? Okay, Nurse Felix. Nurse Felix delivers food to a Muslim patient and after a few minutes, biglang binalik yung, yung pagkain. It's already obvious. It's because binigyan niya yung patient ng meat. And he wasn't really, you know, being the nurse, we have to be aware of that. Um, to be able to be culturally competent, we just have to make sense. Napakadali. Common sense, guys. Common sense lang. And I'm sure all of us here could, could have that good sense. And just connect the dots. Kasi hindi naman siya laging, laging standard. Itong being culturally competent is not standardized. It depends on our, each of us. Now, before we, before we be, you know, able to intervene on this one, anong pinaka number one? Siyempre, patient history, hindi mo naman pwedeng, ah, mukhang Chinese si ma'am, okay, Chinese to. Kailangan na, hindi ko din siya tingkat sa mata. Ay, napaka-mistisa ni ma'am, American siguro to, slang. Diba? We are not magicians to, to be able to, to just, okay, I think she's a Muslim, I will not give her, give her meat. We have to do patient history taking, and I'm sure you've you've been learning that one here. Know your patient, guys. Know your patient. Ask. Um, sa amin sa Germany, tinatanong namin sino kasama sa bahay. May namatay ba? Sino anong mga sakit sa bahay ng mga pamilya? Sino nagaalaga sa kanya? Anong trabaho? What's the job? So we will know how will we be able to um, react to patient. Because if she's a doctor, the patient is a doctor, and then you react. Nagmamarunong ka dyan, you know, this and this and that. And the patient, excuse me, that's my specialty and why are you being so nagmamarunong and you're just a nurse, diba? You have to adjust, you have to know that. So, once you've taken the history of the patient, you have to be aware. We're all, you know, modernized now, we can even research it online or ask our other nurses who already dealt with other patients who have the same ethnicity, religion, or socioeconomic lifestyle. And now, you have to apply it. Now, if you apply it, at the end, you have to do self-evaluation. Okay na naman, if I, am I overreacting? It, it can be practiced, and over time, you will be an expert in cultural differences already. Okay, just to finish this one, um, Cultural competence is a social concept. Inimbento lang ng tao to guys, sa totoo lang. It's just a so social concept. And syempre, personal, why? Because we have our own learning, faces in learning, and not just sinabi kong, okay, maging culturally competent kayo. Eh, naku, kailangan agad-agad ang galing ko na. Hindi ganun yun. Gawa-gawa lang to ng tao, but ginawa to for the betterment, for the, us being flexible nurses, to be able to to deliver our work well because one wrong move could actually impede the recovery of the patient. Because as I've said earlier, that different cultures need specific cultural care. If we don't provide them th their cultural needs, it could actually stop or cost a life, actually. Sa totoo lang talaga. It is deeply rooted in our own understanding. Only then that we can associate it with our patients. Knowing at a certain point of view, we have our own way of treating patients, and once we learn that patient has a different um, culture, we have to adjust and change it. Okay? It's not personal. Hindi siya, hindi siya parang, grabe ka naman, ba't ka nagpapat na ugali? It's not changing your attitude. It's just for the work, for our patient. Patient is our number one priority here. And of course, the key to be an effective um, leader, or sorry, of uh, leader nurses, is that very basic patient history taking. We have to know that so that we will be able to apply what we've learned. And I'm sure, guys, I am not expecting you to be culturally competent agad -agad. You have to experience it. It could actually take two years, three years. Even my language is, kaya pinakita ko yun sa inyo, even the language, you have to apply it first with your peers and then with the patients. 
Okay? Because language, like, for example, if you're going to be working abroad, you have to learn their language because it's part of their culture. And yun lang nga, may struggles. But you will be, diba? You will hone it and you will be better. Yun lang. And guys, I have a YouTube channel. That's my YouTube channel. That's one of my videos. Now, for those fourth year students who want to actually learn about interested in Germany or abroad or idea lang how it is to work in, in Germany, you just have to, you know, um, subscribe. <laughs> Thank you. If you have questions, ha? if you have questions. <laughs> Hi, Carsey here. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel.